Hey everybody, welcome to my new video. This time I want to go back to this scene and there were a lot of you asking for the lighting instructions for these, how to do these light streaks and the volume streaks and all that stuff. So we'll go over those topics and recreate the scene, obviously without the character because that will take too long, but if you really want to use the Witcher character, um, you can find it on my Patreon, there are 100 plus scenes there. You can check them out and it would mean the world to me if you supported me. So yeah, if you want to use some of these assets, go check out my Patreon. And also, if you're new to the channel and you like this sort of tutorials, um, please hit that subscribe button and that bell button to get notified when I release something new. And now let's get to it and let's create this dungeon or a crypt scene. First of all, let's create a plane. So shift A, mesh plane, and we'll scale this up. So tab into the edit mode press S then 4 to scale it up 4 times and this will serve as a base for our room so right now just go to the edge select select these two edges by holding shift press E then Z and extrude I don't know maybe something like 5 meters and right now we'll just extrude this so press A to select all alt E extrude faces along normals and you can press S to extrude with even thickness and let's enter something like 0.3 or maybe 0.5 for this scene and let's hit minus to go to the opposite side but right now let's press A to select all and shift N to recalculate normals because probably we flipped them when we extruded in the negative direction so yeah there'll be a base for our room and right now I want to create some window openings here and sometimes I manipulate the mesh directly but right now I want to use quick and easy boolean workflow so let's press shift A mesh plane tab into the edit mode RX and 90 to rotate this 90 degrees let's look from the front and bring this a little bit up right now we can scale this on the Z so it's S and Z and we can now go to the vertex select by pressing 1, select these top vertices, Control B and then V to enable vertex only mode. Add some segments with mouse wheel and confirm like this. We can go really close uh, with these two. And right now we can just select them, press Alt M and merge at center. And right now select these two, press O to enable proportional editing, GZ and drag this down and you can adjust the fall off with the mouse wheel so something like this I think will be fine okay let's turn off proportional editing let's select all and scale it on the X maybe as well and right now we can press shift D then X to duplicate this and maybe scale it down but I want to align this on the bottom there so let's switch these to vertex snap gz and by holding control we can snap it to this vertex right here and maybe we can adjust this a little bit too okay and right now we can symmetrize these no need to use the mirror modifier so just press f3 and let's enter symmetrize but we need to select everything we want to symmetrize so let me go back select this and again symmetrize and you can see here it's minus x to plus x so it will flip that and right now we can select all press e to extrude and we have our template for for the windows and right now we can just press g and y and move it here Maybe it's not enough, so let's press G and Y after entering the edit mode, tab out and do it like this. Okay. And right now, if you have uh, bull tools enabled, um, go check it into the preferences add-ons, search for bull tool and you can just enable it by checking and right now you can select this object and we'll use it as a cutout object and shift click the room. Right now we can just press Ctrl minus to make the cuts. Okay, 
and as you can see the original object has only bounds now visible so you can still move it around and place the windows wherever you want you can even scale this and do whatever you want with it so that's very useful and right now I want to make similar cutouts here but not all the way um, I don't know uh, the English word um, for that but sometimes there are like these um, cutouts in the wall so maybe let me know in the comments and we can reuse that bool object so let's just select that and press shift D or Z90 to rotate it 90 degrees go to the top view and move it here and you can see right now if you do the same thing shift click and control minus you can do a cutout there as well right now just move it and place it like here so it doesn't go through and right now only thing that's left is to modify the object so let's go to wireframe view by holding z let's look from the side and maybe we can go to the vertex select select these two windows and delete them and maybe just shift the this one duplicate it let's center that and let's go all the way to the bottom like that okay and i really like this right now so tab out and this is the base for our room and right now i want to fill these windows with the grid so when the light comes through it's got it got split into these rays so let's shift click right here and create a new plane so shift a plane let's rotate this on the x we don't need to go into the edit mode right now let's look from the front bring it up a little bit center okay and let's tab in we can rotate this so r 45 degrees and let's subdivide so right click subdivide and you can see there are a number of cuts here so we can do like four maybe a little bit more yeah let's go for six and right now we can make this a little bit larger okay that'll be great and now we just need to delete some excess um, geometry so select the faces you um, won't be needing here and that would get into the way yeah and we can like delete all of these okay just like that and right now select all the edges and bevel so press b so press Ctrl B, only one segment, and bevel those like that. Let's go to the face select. We don't need to select these faces. Okay, press Ctrl I and delete these. Sorry. Okay and delete faces so right now we have a nice little window grid we can extrude that go to the solid view and place it somewhere here maybe not make it so wide something like that okay and right now we can duplicate this so let's press alt d so it's a link duplicate and we can now all D once again and move it here to create another one and now I want to create some kind of steps here or a days so select the room object tab into the edit mode select the face shift D and then P to separate select the new object like this edge select and press G twice to slide it somewhere here it will be quite large I think and maybe a little bit here select all extrude and now we can do some cuts so press ctrl r and make a cut here and one more here 
that's because I want to raise this area here so let's extrude that okay so there'll be our steps and we can add some details later um, but right now as you can see there's a cut here because we duplicated this face from from the object and the modifier with the booleans is still there on the duplicated object so just remove these booleans and we're good to go right now to make the scene more interesting i want to create some stone steps here and it'll be really easy to do so go to the top view place the cursor in the middle of the scene so shift s cursor to world origin and right now shift a and add a single word if you don't have that um, go and activate the extra objects add-on and add a single word and right now after adding a single word you're already in the edit mode so just switch to the vertex select and move the new vertex somewhere we can switch to the wireframe so we better see what we're doing and right now i just want to create some some steps here so you can just press e x to extrude the vertex here and now by holding control and right clicking we can extrude some shapes and always close the last one with F, select the new one, shift D to duplicate and draw a new stone like that. So yeah, this will take a minute or two. Okay, and after that we can select them all, so press A then F to fill and we can now E to extrude, switch to the individual origins, so hold period, switch to the individual origins and scale them down. And of course you can do some minor adjustments here and there. When you select some of these words and press G twice you can slide them, slide them around. Okay, just like that. And right now we can give some finishing touches to these steps. And I think we'll need to do some more cuts. So maybe two more here and one here. And right now we can just bevel this. So alt click the edge and press control B to bevel. Okay, and right now again, we can slide some of these faces to create some kind of irregularities and maybe here we can chip it out so control b then v to create this vertex bevel press control t to triangulate and maybe move it around a little bit like that now we can select this edge control b and you can select the vertex and press G twice to slide it all the way here. Maybe create one bevel there and one here as well. Slide it. And you probably get my point. Um, this is just to make this a little bit more interesting. And right now we can even make this surface a little bit uneven so it has a little bit of variation okay i'm quite satisfied with this so let's create some sarcophagus or something like that so shift right click the cursor there create the plane let's make it larger on the x-axis s and y here maybe make it larger and extrude and let's make the shape a little bit interesting. So I to inset, extrude once again, make a cut here, bevel that and Alt E to extrude long normals. But we need to switch back to the median point here, Alt E and do it like this. Maybe here we can do inset and extrude down. So something like this that and right now we can add another plane let's look from the top so seven on the numpad go to the wireframe view tab in and move it here 
scale it. Okay, and there'll be like a corner of the sarcophagus, so we can now add a mirror modifier. on the X and Y axis as well. And since we left the origin point there and moved in the edit mode, it mirrors nicely. So right now we can just look from the side and extrude. And if you hold control, we'll enable the snapping to some of these words. So you get the same height as the original. Right now we can just do some cut here, bevel that, alt click here, select and make it a little bit smaller. Maybe add some cut here, bevel, extrude along normals. And you probably get my point. Again, this is about making some kind of variations and nice shapes. So, yeah, I really like it, but I don't want to do that inset here because there will be something on the top of the sarcophagus. So, I think we can leave it like this and proceed. So, Shift A, plane, let's move it up. So, look from the side, move it up here, look from the top, go to the wireframe. And right now we can just scale this up like this, make it larger, inset, inset once again and move this down a bit, maybe once again and up. So again, we just want some uh, visual interest here, but I feel like this looks good. Maybe instead of extruding we could insert this and move it out so it's uniform okay and right now i just want to rotate this a little bit and move it aside so it appears open a little bit and maybe move this whole thing a little bit here to the front okay so I guess um, this will serve nicely as a base for the scene and we can now proceed to some lighting. Um, there won't be much more of the modeling here, maybe it will look a little bit plain in the end. So if it does, you can always add some details like rocks or, or importing some characters or anything you want, inserting some monsters, um, you name it. So go ahead, have fun. You can model all the stuff here, some chains, um, whatever you need. Okay, right now let's reset the cursor. So shift S, cursor to world origin and right now add a plane and scale this all the way up and we can use the isocam plugin. If you can't find it, uh, it's in the description. There's a link. You just load it into the add-ons in the preferences and right now Let's click the PR ISOCAM and let's create the game ISOCAM. I think will be a nice point of view here. And let's switch the resolution to some other ratio and move it a little bit up. And we can now go to the camera settings and change this to at least 16 orthographic scale. Right now we can select the new plane and move it down. and adjust the camera on the Z axis, so GZ and move it down. So that'll be our composition with the background. So right now we can proceed with some lighting. We can switch to the material preview and switch to the scene lights and scene world. And we'll see nothing basically um, because this is too dark. So let's shift A, add a light. Let's add the area light, move it up. So. I don't know, something like 10 meters or eight. So GZ eight. Okay, that'll do for now. And let's add some strength to that. Okay. And we can add some color to the scene. And basically this will be just two colors. So select the room, create a new material. Let's call this stone. 
and we can make it like a yellowish darker color here and now select the stones the same material but you can duplicate it here and just make it a little bit darker so there's some contrast here and we can right now just switch between these two to make it a little bit interesting of course you can add the third one you can add a colored object um, whatever you need I just want to make this um, really simple okay so this will be our materials and here I want a separate material for the background so create the background material and let's make it dark for now okay and now select the area light and let's rotate it so R X 45 but first let's switch to the cursor pivot point so 3d cursor R X 45 degrees minus RZ 45 and let's press G twice and drag it out a little bit and we'll need much stronger light than this and I want it to be lower so R X X twice to make it rotate on the local axis and move this down like this we can make it larger so it creates that nice little reflection that nice gradient on the background if you look from here and gz twice to move it so something like this and let's make it 1500 for now and let's give it some like a blue blue cyan tone or like that and then I want to have a light that shines like a right through the windows and creates all these um, interesting shadows and effects so let's press shift a add another area light let's bring it up R X let's do 45 minus maybe more and let's give it a strength of 1500 too so it's really strong and it's really close let's make it small so it creates um, sharp shadows but not too much so there's a, a little bit of soft shadows there and we can now just modify the angle and you can see what nice shadows that will create we can rotate it on the Z a little bit so it draws some shadows here as well and right now i don't like this uh, flickering of the shadows in the ev so we can now disable soft shadows and let's enable some effects here okay so just like that you have a nice preview of the lighting you're creating i really like something like this Where it throws that um, shadow here and of course you can modify the color of the light to to something like that okay and right now to make it really interesting we'll need some fog here some volumetrics so shift a add a cube of course you can go for volumetrics in the world settings here but i really like to make to just make a cube because i feel like there is much better control um, over that fog. Okay, so let's create the object. I will call it fog so I can find it better later. Let's enable those filters here so we can disable it. And let's create a new material. Let's call it fog. And here you just remove the principle BSDF from the surface output. And in the volume, you will add principled volume. And let's change the density to something like 0 0.05 or 0 0.1 we can start with 0 0.1 okay and now if you look closer we can make it maybe smaller and now you see how you can easily create fog you can see these rays there and now we'll need to disable that fog object so it doesn't get in the way of manipulating the scene so let's just click this arrow here and right now we can rotate that light object and create some nice effects I 
I really like this one though. With just a little bit of a shadow here. Okay, and now if we just select this area and preview it cycles. Let's go for a GPU and let's preview rendered. Um, that might take a little bit longer because um, the volumetrics materials are really intensive but I can already see this might be a little bit too dark so let's go to the fog object and we don't need to activate it just select it here in the outliner go to the material tab and right now you can modify the material here so yeah let's go to the density and 0 0.05 i think will be enough maybe 0 0.075 yeah just play with these settings um so you actually get those rays and get those visible uh, visible light rays and you can always play with the light too so if you want to make it smaller to have a sharper shadows you can make it really small area light here and now let's have a look at the preview yeah i guess um this works a little bit better so and one last thing uh, to do here if we really want uh this to look realistic is to close the scene so the room isn't affected by world lighting or or outside light but we'll get to that in a second um, I really want to add one more light here inside the sarcophagus so let's place the cursor there shift a and let's add the point light move it a little bit and move it down and we can maybe make it stronger like 250 maybe even more we'll see about that and give it a little bit of a green cyan color like this move it even lower and maybe go for 500 okay and let's look at the preview i think it adds a little nice touch to the scene but here in the corner it gets a little bit dark so we can add some kind of light there so shift right click the cursor there add light add a point light make it larger let's make it larger here like that and this should be really soft light like 25 or something just to really bring some bring some lighting here and let's match it with the color of the other lights so it doesn't get in the way so much so this is just to add a little bit of ambience but be careful that the light is actually inside the room and you will see why in the second so let's select the room object go to the edge select and select these two edges shift d enter b to separate and select these new edges and right now of course there are again these modifiers so we can remove them let's go to vertex select select this one go to the top view we can switch to the wireframe view and right now you can extrude on the y and if you hold control you can snap it here so if you select them all you can recreate the face there and right now you can just select these two opposite edges look from the front press easy and move it down you can snap it but i recommend going a little bit more downward so something like this i feel like okay so you get a closed room basically right now if we go to the camera view and the render preview we can just see some cube but if you go to the object properties and visibility you can turn off camera ray visibility and since we are in cycles and we're using ray tracing we can just disable the rays that go to camera and right now we just disabled the visibility of the object itself to the camera but it's still there for the computing of shadows light and everything so this way you really get 
um, the most realistic behavior of the light in the closed space and with the light shining only through only through that windows with no additional lighting from the outside so yeah this is very nice technique um, you can use to make uh, these dramatic lighting um, in the closed rooms okay and right now we can go to the world settings and just modify a world lighting a little bit to make it a little bit more interesting like this maybe not so blue and make it darker to really just paint um, some of these shadows with that world lighting okay and after you're done with the lighting you can go to the render settings and expand color management switch the look to something with more contrast so medium high contrast or something like that so these shadows and lights actually stand out more and play with exposure so we can bring this up a little bit to something like 1.5 and maybe even make it a high contrast scene okay um, so this is basically it and the most challenging thing here uh, will be to render this properly so in the render settings i recommend to go 500 samples and more maybe even thousand let's try that and of course you will need to use the noiser i use the nvidia optics uh, the noiser denoise add-on but um for some of you this doesn't work or i haven't been successful in running it on a Mac too. So if you have troubles running the noise, you can always um, go to the compositing and add the Intel denoiser. So if you check use nose, you will have a render layers node here, press shift A, filter and add the denoise. And that's basically it. And it will denoise for you. And it's the Intel AI denoiser. The results are really good. So I think you will like it. So let me remove the girl here and we can render out the scene and see how it looks. Okay, so this is the final render. This is how it looks after the noising as well. So you can see there's uh, no dots there. And I think we should reduce the exposure to something like 0.75 because it was too bright. So yeah, this is the final render. I hope you like this video and if you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button and that bell button if you want to get notified when I release something new. And thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day.